the next item that we'll discuss is Donald Trump and his uh, his vice presidential pick, <laughs> and and the attempted coup in the Republican Party. So we're going to take two uh, two political discussions concerning Donald Trump. I think I had mentioned to you previously about the Stop the Trump movement that is still alive and well. I, I think it is so abominable that uh, that there are people, they call themselves Republican conservatives. They, they claim that they're fighting for the, re, for the conservatives. That they're still, they're, what they're trying to do right now is overthrow the will of the people. And that is what is absolutely unacceptable to me. They didn't like, they didn't like the way the people voted in the primaries, and they're doing everything they can to overthrow the will of the people. And um, to me, that's just absolutely inexcusable, what they're doing. Uh, the, the, there's a woman, a woman representative, who was at the head of this movement, and she is a representative from Colorado. And in Colorado, they overthrew the will of the people in the primary, and now she's trying to do the same thing here. So uh, I did... I did send you an article explaining what they were trying to do that you can investigate for yourself if you want to. Basically, I know I know less about this than I knew about Turkey, but I'll tell you, I'll share with you what I do know. I did send you this article that says explain how how anti-Trump groups hope to upend the Republican convention. So it's not over yet, okay? This past Thursday and Friday was a meeting of the Rules Committee of the, the for the Republican Party. And it was uh, obviously before the convention. So there are 121 members of the committee that set the rules for the convention. And in order to force a vote at the convention, in other words, a vote, a vote to change the rules, what they were trying to do, brethren, okay, let me explain that. What this, what this group is trying to do is they are trying to change the rules of the Republican convention that say, when a candidate wins the election, a primary election, according to the rules that the state set, some states say the one that gets the majority of votes gets all of the delegates from that state. Others say you get a proportion of the delegates, depending on how many delegates and depending on how on, on the on the percentage by which you won, you know. And uh, so each state sets its own rules, but the rules are set, and. Um, this, this group of people does not stop Trump movement. They want to change. Now, those were the state rules. The state rules of the state primaries were set. So Donald Trump has more than 1,500 uh, delegates pledged to vote, promise, promising that when the convention starts, or when the time comes to vote at the convention, that they will vote for Donald Trump, that they will vote the will of the people in accordance with the rules set by each state, which has the, the state which has sent them to the national convention, that they will vote according to the they will vote for the candidate in accordance with the rules of the primary set by the Republican Party of the state that's sending them. And as those rules stand right now, as I understand it, they are bound. If in other words, if a state, if the majority of people in the state elect Donald Trump and he gets their delegates, whether, however many delegates he gets from the state, those men or women that go to the National Convention are obligated on the first vote to vote the will of the people. Then if on that first vote the candidate does not get um, the, the required amount of votes, which I believe is 1,220, I think it was, if anyone gets 1,220, it should be there should be only one vote because all of the delegates that were bound by the will of the people should vote according to the way they're supposed to vote and that candidate would be elected to be the nominee for the Republican Party. So that's what's coming up in the convention. Donald Trump is not yet the official representative called a nominee, okay? He's representing the Republican Party in the public election for president and as a participant as one of the people running in the election, he's called a nominee. He was nominated, he will be nominated by the Republican Party 
to represent the Republican Party and all of the people who are Republicans in the national election. If you vote for Donald Trump, you know, you're voting. All the people that voted in the primary, all the people that claim to be Republicans, all the people that aren't Republicans okay, uh, that want him will vote for him. He's the nominee. He's the representative of that group of people, of that platform. They have a platform as to what he stands for. So this Stop Trump movement are trying to change the rules and say, well, let me, let me finish what I'm saying. So if for some reason all of the delegates do not vote as promised, or if no candidate has the minimum amount of 1,220, I believe that's the right number, then there's, a, then there's a second vote, or a third vote, or a fourth vote, until they get a majority of, of votes that will elect a candidate. The key word here is that after the first vote, the delegates are no longer bound. In other words, a delegate that's anti-Trump could, could be forced, if he's an ethical man, to go to Cleveland and vote for Trump because the people of the state elected Trump, but the delegate himself doesn't like Trump. So after the first vote, if, if Trump is not elected, if there are not enough votes to elect him on the first round, and they vote again, then all of the delegates are unbound and the man who doesn't like Trump but was forced to vote for him on the first vote now no longer has to vote for him. So now if, if the candidate is not, if the nominee is not elected on the first round, then what it comes down to is that the person who will be the nominee for the Republican Party is the will of the delegates and not the will of the people. So even that I'm not too happy about. <laughs> But that's been going on for years. But it's, the point is, it's never been a problem before. It, it, we're having problems these days that we never had before. So the Stop Trump delegates tried to change the rules uh, to the vote, saying that all delegates would be unbound for the first vote. That's what they wanted to do this past Thursday and Friday. And the vote was late Thursday, I understand. He wants to change the rules saying any delegate can vote however he wants and he has no obligation to the people of the state that sent him. To me, that's just unbelievable that they would even try to do that. It's a complete overthrow of our democracy. And it's legal because it's the party rules. It really has nothing to do with the law. It has, it's the rules of the party. Our, for, our, our forefathers warned us against political parties. They said we shouldn't even have political parties. But we have them, so we have to deal with them. So there's 121 members of the committee. And the, the, the coalition that wanted to, or the group that wanted to change the rules, needed 28 of those 121 members to force a vote. They needed 28 members of the committee, of the rules committee, to say we're going that we will have a vote, a vote not at the committee, but at the convention floor. Should we unbind? I may not be right about that. I just, I don't know exactly where the vote would be. I guess, if, I guess it would have to be at the convention. An open vote. Does anyone, whoever thinks that all, all of the obligations should be released and these delegates can vote for whoever they want to vote for on the first vote. Okay? So, we have a committee of 121 members of the Rules Committee of the Republican Party. Okay. And uh, you needed 28 of those 121 to force a vote at the conference, at the convention in Cleveland before the delegates vote. Let me see, let me see, let me tell you something else first for those of you that may not be familiar with this. Every state sends their delegates to the, to the national convention and is an actual vote. The chairman of the convention calls the name of the state, the state of Delaware, the state of New York, the state of New Jersey. When he calls your name, the spokesperson for the, for the delegation, because there's always more than one delegate, so the group of people from one state that are all delegates collectively, they're called a delegation. The leader of the delegation stands up and says, the great state of New York votes for Donald Trump, or whoever they vote for. So we see the head of the delegation speaks for the delegation, and the delegation is supposed to be speaking for the, 
people who elected them at the primary. That's the way it's supposed to work. So, uh, so this Stop Trump movement, they went to the Rules Committee meeting and they needed 28 out of 121 members of the committee to force a vote on the floor of the convention. Before the chairman said, started calling the names of the states and letting them vote, they wanted a vote as to whether or not the delegates would be bound to what the voters of the primaries want them to do on the first vote. They were trying to unbind them, hoping that enough of the delegates that were bound to vote for Trump but really didn't want Trump would vote their conscience, that's what they're saying, vote their conscience, in other words, vote who they want for, not who the people wanted them to vote for. So, so the, uh, the, um, the move, it wasn't really a request, request, the move to force the vote on the floor of the convention before the first ballot, to force a vote that would unbind the delegates, that would let them vote whoever they wanted to vote for, whoever their conscience told them to vote for on the first ballot. Okay? The attempt to force a vote before they voted, is anyone not following me? Okay? Was quashed in the committee. You needed 28 members of this committee to force, of the 28 of 121 members of the committee to force a vote on the floor of the convention which if they got a majority in the convention would then have unbound all of the delegates on the first ballot. But they were soundly defeated. They, but they got 21. They got 21 members of a 121 member committee uh, that would be willing to force a vote on the floor of the convention. So apparently Donald Trump has, has successfully struck a deal with the Republican Party they found a, they found a, but brother, this is not good. This, this is ripping the party apart, disenfranchising all of these people. It could destroy the whole Republican Party. It could really hurt America. It's, it's just, these people, in my opinion, these people are crazy. I mean, talk about sore losers. But I'll tell you what I think. I think that this Cruz crowd, I think that at least some of them, they really think that Trump is the Antichrist. And that's why they're fighting like this. They really think he's the Antichrist. That's, that's my personal opinion. I haven't read it anywhere. Not that it's not out there. I haven't read it anywhere, but that's what I think. So they're willing to break all the rules, and they're desperate to not let him in. So they lost, and uh, Trump seems to have a strong deal with the Republican Party. They've agreed on what the platform that he will run on will be, and he will be building the wall and they've accepted his platform on immigration. And I don't know what I don't know what concessions Trump made, but you have to make some concessions. You have to come to a middle ground, and he's this top negotiator. So um, that's the story. Now there are people who are in the Republican Party that are saying the current existing rules actually say that the delegates are not bound, and they are encouraging delegates to not be bound by that, not be bound to the will of the people. So the Republican Party answers thusly, saying, the person that's going to be running the count, that maybe the chairman, I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure what the correct title is, let's say the chairman of the convention, she will have a list of how many delegates were assigned to whom from each state. And she's going to know that the state of New York voted for Donald Trump. So if she says, and how does the state of New York vote, and the, the, the head delegate stands up and says, the great state of New York you know, votes for, I don't even know who would be running against him, hmm? votes for Joe Blow, okay? The chairman of the convention will say, that's not what my information is, and I have to challenge him. And it would cause a disruption of the convention, the press would get a hold of it. It would not be good for the party, it would not be good for the country, it would not be good for the winning the election. It would not be a good thing. And it, the only sense that, that I can make out of it is either they're very sore losers or they really think he's the Antichrist and they, they, they will do anything to get him out. But they won't be able to get him out.
so uh, that's Monday. I don't know. The convention is three days. I don't recall. I was at the George Bush's convention, W's convention. I don't recall whether they voted at the beginning. No, they had to vote at the end because I wasn't there the first night. I heard the votes and I wasn't there the first night. So I think it's the last thing that they do. They vote is it, and the, on the last day of the convention. They vote. So Ted Cruz will be speaking at the convention, which is surprising me. I wonder what he's going to say. He's going to say, don't vote for this man, he's the Antichrist. I don't know what he's going to say. But uh, Trump, Trump he's, he's, has a very strong Christian um, influence in his, uh, in his platform, and he actually has Tebow speaking. You know, Tebow was the, uh, is the football player, he was a football player that would give God, he would get down on his knees and give God all the glory when he made a touchdown. I don't really have an opinion about that, brethren, I don't know, but they fired him because of it, you know. He would get down on his knees and point to heaven, you know, making a public statement in a game. I don't think football should be politicized on any, on any side, you know. <sighs> but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What's the big deal if he wants to do it? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. So he was fired. He was supposed to, supposedly a very big football talent. Maybe, uh, maybe someone who's into football that's listening in can, can clue us in more on Tebow. And then he just went down the tubes. They traded him. And then the, the, that team traded him again. And the last I heard, he was just knocked out of football. Uh, and I don't think he's playing for professional ball today. But he will be speaking at the convention. So, and, and Donald Trump has made a commitment. He actually, I heard his, 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 um, his speech. <clears throat> I could have been there Saturday morning. I received an invitation to be there Saturday morning. Because I was present at the, uh, at the Patchogue uh, rally. So they, they got my name. I, I actually could have been there. But I just couldn't stop working on the book. I w w really would have liked to have been there. But it didn't work. Yeah, he's been saying all along that he intends to unbind uh, this uh, bondage that, that tax-exempt organizations are in, primarily Christian churches and Christian pastors, that they cannot give their opinion to their people, they cannot give their political opinion or speak out politically. It's very unconstitutional. And I really did not know where it came from. Uh, so he researched it and he said President Johnson did it. So, uh, you know, the Democrats are responsible for, for so many anti-democratic moves, and yet they've got the minorities, most of the minorities, believing that they're the party of the, of the minorities. It's just, the mind control is just amazing. But when I heard him make his speech announcing Mike Pence, that he, that he had chosen Mike Pence, he went even further. I just love, Don I love Donald Trump honesty, Donald Trump's honesty. And I love his boldness. I just absolutely love it. And I think a lot of people just love it. And he just stood up there and said, he researched it, and it's his understanding that there was a local preacher that gave Johnson a hard time when he, when he was president. I don't know when he was president. He was president. Johnson was a powerful man. I think he was the head of the Senate before he became president. I don't know, but I think he said it was when he was president. The guy must have spoken out against him. And he said Johnson had the power to do it. And he got this, this rule. It was not a law, it's a rule in the IRS. It's an unconstitutional rule that says you lose your tax exempt status if you make political speech. And it's been that way ever since. And he's, he's promised to undo it. It's an IRS rule. So he's very pro Christian. Trump. So anyway, I'm sorry I wasn't there. I would have really liked to have been there. There will be other times. So uh, before I go on, I would just like to talk briefly about um, Pence. And does anybody have anything to say about anything that I said, or anything to add, or any questions about? Sheila. Yes, yes, Jesse. Um, real quick, uh, the Tim Tebow, um, the guest speaker. Yeah. Trump had wanted him to do it. Um, but two days ago, some people came out and said it was just a rumor and he would not be speaking at the National Convention. Oh, did he say why? Um, it, he didn't say why. 
I, I couldn't get anything uh, on that. I just, you know, from, from what I understood was that he had, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it sounded like it was more of a, of a religious thing um, than, than mixing the politics and the religion or something. I don't, but I, I can't say that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I do know that he did come out and say it was just a rumor that he's not going to be speaking. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I, I just love Donald Trump's uh, honesty, and he also talked about the rules vote. He came out and said that they were, you know, that they were largely the people that were, tr were uh, responsible for the Stop Trump movement were, were destroyed or whatever, whatever strong word he used. You know, I, I just love it. And I know that a lot of people who are voting for Trump, they don't like all of his policies. I know Alex Jones doesn't like all of his policies. Alex Jones doesn't, isn't for building the wall. Look, you, you can't please everybody. But I love the man's honesty. I believe that, uh, I believe that he's really going to do a good job for us. I believe that he's, he's um, that he, he, in the areas where he's weak, that he will listen to counselors and that he's a very wise man. He'll be able to draw some good conclusions. And he actually stood up there and he answered Hillary's complaint about him that he has no political, international political experience. And he stood up there and he said, she's right, I have no experience. And he received a, a, an applause. The man's just honest. Okay, whatever you want to say about him, he is an honest man. What you see is what you get. And uh, he said, but I am an international businessman. And I do have, I don't remember the word that he used, so I'm going to use my own word. So I do have insight. And I was against the Iraq war, and I did call it right on the Brexit. And he, he just said to himself, I have political savvy. I'm an international businessman. So anyway, it, I mean, it, it's a very small chance that he will not be nominated. I understand that he's running neck and neck, but actually I understand he's ahead of Hillary in the polls right now. And these letters, this, these emails have really hurt her. So look, brethren, the bottom line is it's all in God's hands. We are, we are required to fight with all of our legitimate strength. But the matter is in God's hands. And the truth of the matter is that, if you can hear this, if God's people don't fight, then he turns us over to what we want. Yes, you have to understand this. The matter is in God's hands, and he can get us out of this mess. Of course he can, okay? But he will only do it if the people are crying out to him. So if the people are not crying out to him, he lets us stay in our mess. So yes, he's in control, but that doesn't mean it's going to turn out okay. It's really dependent on him. I mean, it's really dependent on us. Is it dependent on him or is it dependent on us? It's dependent on him, but he makes his decision dependent on us. So all these silly Christians and Jehovah's Witnesses and all these silly people that say they serve God, that, that think they shouldn't be involved in politics, uh, thank God you're not the, the, thank God there are people that are not like you or the Lord would turn us over to tyrants every day. And there are Christians that believe they shouldn't be involved in politics. You're silly, you're foolish, and you're responsible for every bad thing that's happened to this country because of your ignorance. So, okay, I'd like to start another file and we'll talk about Mike Pence next.